The Sacro Monte di Pieta of Bologna was established on the 22nd of April, 1473, a few years after the foundation of the earliest institutions of this kind in Italy. The origin of the Monte di Pieta mainly relates to the activity of Franciscan observants, who, by such organizations, aimed at protecting the lower social classes from usury, which was worsening a situation of serious economic and monetary imbalance in the mid-15th century. The main instrument of action of a monte was pawnbroking. In Bologna, Michele Carcono of Milan took the initiative, and the municipality of Bologna authorized him to create a mons pietatis. The initial capital, paid by private donors, was equal to 348 lira, corresponding, at the time, to almost 25 castellate of grapes or 116 corbe of wheat. The capital was guaranteed by donations and, in the earliest years, by a self-taxation set by the members of the Confraternita del Monte, who committed themselves to increase the capital by annual payments of 13 bolognini and transfers of resources in favour of the institute. In addition to pawnbroking, the Monte carried out typical banking activities from the start and, until the early 19th century, it was the only local bank established as a charitable trust operating on a non-profit basis. Beneficiaries of the Mount activity were not the poor in the strict sense, but mainly small craftsmen and shopkeepers who could obtain an advance payment for goods or objects being pawned. The Monte was a pious place and, as such, it was protected by special penal laws against theft and robbery. This is why it was also a safe place for the deposit and safekeeping of assets and valuables. Since the earliest years, this feature allowed landowners and businessmen to have their current accounts managed, besides depositing their assets. Indeed, they would also entrust the Monte with tax collection and payments related to their business. In the early 16th century, the Monte was totally reformed in order to be more suitable to manage such new activities. The Board of Directors, a new management body, represented all the classes of the working population. The Monte, until then independent from the public purse, was now supported by the town council, either directly and by obtaining the management of some tax collection, the safekeeping of judicial pledges, and even the management of the Tribunale del Torone, the common name of the criminal court of Bologna. In 1549, Cristoforo Saccardi, a wealthy craftsman from Bologna, left his possessions to the Monte under the obligation to provide dowries to poor and honest damsels. The Monte, therefore, began to manage dowry charity funds, in less than a hundred years then, the Monte became essential and indispensable to the operation of local socio-economic life. From the second half of the 16th century, a graduated interest mechanism on pawns was set. Interest rates were applied in an ethically responsible manner. Minor pledges were accepted for free. Ordinary ones would pay a low interest, whereas precious pawns would pay a high rate. In the 17th and 18th centuries, in order to fight the economic crisis, the credit activity widened its scope to include the upper classes regarding valuables and jewels. The practice to pawn goods for loans still continued, even more structured with the purpose of supporting the production of silk and hemp, which was crucial to the Bolognese economy. The growth went on until the end of the 18th century. Napoleon's armies arrived in Bologna in June 1796. Among the first measures was a spoliation of all goods kept in the Monte, which was forced to cease its activities. The coming of savings banks and credit unions seemed to spell the end of the Monte of Bologna. Yet its activity would start again and consolidate, mostly with merely welfare purposes. It was only at the end of the 19th century that the mixed banking and welfare activity was resumed, to culminate in the 20th century with the acknowledgement of the Banca del Monte di Bologna as an institute having mainly banking activities. This brought to an end the exchange relationship between the Monte and the less poor among the poor, which represented the majority of the population, 
The last chapter of a story of over 500 years was concluded at the end of 1900 by the institution of the Fondazione del Monte di Bologna e Ravenna, 